Good morning. I'm Pastor Cheryl Taylor, and in the name of the God who gives our lives purpose, I welcome you to worship today at First Presbyterian Church of Rockwall. Our opening words of scripture today are from Luke chapter 9, verses 1 through 6, and it's that moment in the gospel when Jesus gives the disciples their marching orders, and they move from being hearers of the word to doers of that word. Listen now. Then Jesus called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases, and he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. He said to them, Take nothing for your journey, no staff, no bag, nor bread, nor money, not even an extra tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. Wherever they do not welcome you, as you are leaving that town, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They departed and went through the villages, bringing the good news and curing diseases everywhere. Today, we continue our worship series, Choose Life. And later, after the sermon, we're going to be singing the hymn, In the Midst of New Dimensions. If you're on our email list, that has already been emailed to you. If not, check the Facebook feed. You'll find it there, and we hope you'll sing along later. Also later in the service, we're going to be blessing our students and their teachers and all school workers as they begin the new school year. So now would be a great time to grab your backpack, kids, if you would like to. It's also a really good time to grab your Bibles because in a few minutes we're going to be reading from Luke chapter 4, and I would love for you to be able to follow along in your own Bible. Uh, if you have prayer requests, I remind you that you can always type them into the feed on our Facebook uh, during this uh, broadcast so that the community can be holding those dear to you in their prayers as well. Uh, I am sorry to announce that there will be no garden visiting hours this week. I'm sorry, but I have a conflict. If you would like to meet with me this week, please just let me know and I'd be happy to set up an alternative time. Uh, my multi-week study of, ra of racism and racial justice will begin this coming Wednesday at 6.30 via Zoom. The link is in our e-news. And we also are dropping new midweek videos for adults and for children. So watch each Wednesday on YouTube and Facebook for Weekday Word and Time for Young Disciples. The book club has begun reading The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison for our next discussion, which will be on September 30th. I hope you'll read what is an acclaimed novel and join us for that discussion. And I want to thank everyone who participated in our all-church town hall meeting this last Wednesday. It was wonderful. We had between 35 and 40 families on and off throughout the time, and they heard from our elders, and most importantly, they heard from one another. They caught up, but there were a couple of things I want to point out that came out of this meeting. New floodlights. If you're seeing me more clearly, and you will see our musicians more clearly, the suggestion was made to improve the lighting. We have done that, and I hope you are able to see faces clearly today. Um, several people said that they had hosted watch parties for worship on Facebook, and so we have posted instructions on how to do that on the feed. So share the service with others. Just host, all you have to do is click share this as a watch party and your friends will get a notice and maybe they will choose to join us for worship. Uh, Kevin Loeb tells me that uh, Adult Sunday School will be returning soon, so watch for word of that. Um, it was very clear during the discussion that very few people feel comfortable resuming in-person worship, but know that your session will be talking about that on Monday. Uh, some people, however, are comfortable with smaller outdoor gatherings, maybe in someone's backyard. If that's something that interests you, please get in touch with me or with our member care elder, Tom Pacina, and we would be happy to try to set that up. We've had some volunteers who have offered their, lawn, their shady lawns for your enjoyment. Uh, the one thing that everyone agreed on is that they would love to have another town hall meeting, and so know that your session will set a date when we meet tomorrow, and we will get that information out to you. Now, breathe in, welcome the Spirit's presence, let us worship God.
when we know in our bones what we're here to be and to do, we have coherence, knowing where we belong and finding some kind of meaning in our lives gives us a purpose that holds up even and perhaps especially during the storms of life. Where do you find your meaning and purpose? Will you pray with me? Creator God, you brought us into this life. You gave us new life in Jesus, your son. You breathe with us through your Holy Spirit. Use this word read and proclaimed today to help us to shift focus, to help us find purpose, to help us choose life. And all God's people say, Amen. In today's reading, we get to listen in as Jesus speaks to his home congregation in Nazareth. He reads and comments on words from the prophet Isaiah, words that speak to Jesus' purpose and to our own. I invite you to turn now to Luke chapter 4, verses 17 through 19, as together we listen to God's word for us today. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In life, there are a few existential questions. Among them are, why am I here? What's my purpose? And having an answer to those questions can make, the dif make a difference as to whether your life soars with higher meaning or languishes in a stony field of indecision and inaction. But where do we look? Where do we look for the answers to those questions? Well, as followers of Jesus Christ, we're called to look to the one who is our role model, our shining exemplar, the one in whose image we're created, Jesus. Jesus laid out the details of his purpose in today's reading from the fourth chapter of Luke, where he presents his mission statement to a hometown audience that struggles with what he has to say, even though it should have come as no surprise, because the gospel according to Luke is all about turning the status quo on its head in that beautiful song of praise that Mary sings when she's pregnant. She says that in this child that she's carrying, God is going to turn the world upside down. Through her son, God will knock the powerful from their thrones and lift up the lowly, filling the poor with good things and leaving the rich wanting. 
So what we hear from Jesus, quoting Isaiah here, shouldn't have been a shock. What is new is the fact that he claims these words as his own reason for being, saying that in who he is and in everything that he does, he's fulfilling the words of the prophet. Now, a few chapter, chapters later, in the verses that we heard at the opening of worship today, Jesus expands on that purpose to include us. His mission is our mission. We too have been given a reason to live, to bring good news to the poor, to bring release to those who are captive to all manner of things, to bring sight to those who are literally, spiritually, and morally blinded, to bring liberation to those who are oppressed by unjust social structures. Those are some tall marching orders. How can we live into such a challenge? Well, first of all, through the power of Christ's own spirit. You see, this reading is placed at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry in Luke, and it's the third of three incidents involving the presence of the Holy Spirit. First, at Jesus' baptism, the spirit descends like a dove upon him as a voice from heaven declares, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And following his baptism, the spirit leads Jesus into the wilderness for 40 days of testing and temptation, which Jesus aces. And that same spirit fills Jesus with the power to live into his mission just a few passages before today, just a few verses before today's passage. It's Jesus' openness to the Spirit, his willingness to empty himself out in order to be filled with the Spirit, that leads Jesus to claim both his identity as Messiah and declare what it means in terms of his ministry. The Spirit even figures prominently in the passage that he reads from Isaiah, which begins, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Guess what? Jesus left us with that same Spirit after he ascended to heaven to empower us, to embolden us, to allow us to do things that we could never do on our own without God's help. And that's a great start. But if you're like me, I need a little more. I want to follow Jesus. I want to be filled with his Spirit. I want to make the world a more just place for the poor, the captive, the blind, the oppressed. The thing is, I need more than a mission statement. I even need more than the spiritual fuel to power me through. I need the details on how to achieve it, which is where that call to the apostles comes in. Jesus sends them out to proclaim the kingdom of heaven and to bind up a broken world. You'll note that they don't equip themselves for this task. God equips them, and not just with the Holy Spirit. God also gives them the gifts and the graces that will carry them through good times and through bad. After all, Jesus warns, there'll be fa some failure. You shouldn't expect victory after victory. Instead, the apostles should do what they can with the Spirit's help and then focus, move on if success isn't in the cards. But the key is, they have to go out. They have to do something. And what they do moving forward can be summed up in two critical steps. First, the apostles build on their own strengths, doing the things that Jesus has already modeled for them and trusting God to bless their efforts. Second, they're driven by a desire to share their passion about the kingdom of heaven with others. So build on your strengths, share your passion, because it's so much easier to find and to live into your purpose if you build on your God-given strengths and share what you're truly passionate about. And you and I, with God's help, can do both of these things to bring good news to a hurting world. That's what Shamar Allen did. Shamar saw that gun violence was killing his community in New Orleans, literally and figuratively. On July 13th of this year, just a few short weeks ago, three people died in gun violence in his neighborhood, one of them a nine-year-old boy. Shamar, who himself is the father of a nine-year-old son, saw his purpose clearly right then and there. 
he saw how he could bring good news to a hurting world. So he asked himself, what strengths could he build on to make his neighborhood a safe place? What passion did he long to share in service to the poor and oppressed of New Orleans? Well, in the strengths column, Shamar is a professional trumpet player. As a result, he had a handful of extra instruments laying around his home. He's passionate about the trumpet and about New Orleans musical heritage. But more than that, he's passionate about saving young lives. So he contacted the police to run an idea by them, after which he posted this on Instagram. To all youth in New Orleans, bring me a gun and I'll give you a trumpet. No questions asked. He quickly gave away all the trumpets that he had on hand and purchased more with donations from a GoFundMe campaign. He's working with musicians in the city to provide virtual lessons along with the instruments so that young people can develop their own talent, their own strength, their own passion, so that they can have lives, as we heard from our own youth last week, so that they can have a future with hope. Shamar Allen doesn't have a lot of money. He doesn't have a lot of time. What he does have is a strong skill set and a passion for what he's chosen to put work to work for the greater good. He didn't wait for someone else to act. He acted, even though, let's face it, he'll fail with some, if not most, of those kids. But he didn't let that stop him from trying. He chose life by claiming a purpose that has the potential to bring to others a better life. I see this kind of purposeful living all the time right here in our own congregation. Susan Lazinski, for example, she's a skilled teacher. She's passionate about the immigrants who are coming into our community and about our country. So she put together her strengths and her passions to teach citizenship classes at the Rockwall Public Library. And by the way, when I talked to her this week, because she is so passionate about this, she wanted me to be sure that all of you knew that even now, even during this pandemic, that immigrants can continue to be served through the library's wide-ranging literacy program. Another member, Greg Blair, is semi-retired semi now and able to use one of his strengths, time, to address a passion of his, helping men coming out of incarceration to get a fresh start which would be right in line with what Jesus talked about today. So at least once a week, Greg is out there picking up donations for One Man's Treasure, a local ministry that serves those who are newly released from prison. Greg and another member, Bill Sinclair, are both passionate about, about giving the gift of life through blood donation. And they, in turn, inspired our congregation to host monthly blood drives, which have been incredibly successful during this time of pandemic as people search for ways to do something meaningful, something life-giving. And you too can roll up your sleeve and join Bill this month in Fellowship Hall. Just sign up at redcrossblood.org. You know, the list could go on and on and on. So I'm gonna to return to our original questions. Why are you here? What is your purpose? What strengths can God build on so that you can faithfully follow Jesus and answer his call to serve others? What passions do you have that could be tapped to exhibit the kingdom of heaven in this world? You know, it might not be something that you can act on right now during this time of purposeful distancing and isolation, but perhaps, just perhaps, God is giving you this time to ponder these questions to consider what you have to offer, how God can equip you to be a messenger of good news to those who are suffering. Because as Jesus' reading from Isaiah makes clear, his mission and ours is tied to healing and to justice. Christ's mission and ours is to raise up the poor, to free those who are held captive to and oppressed by all sorts of things, racism, addiction, poverty, loneliness, you name it. Christ came to open the eyes of those who could not see, to make clear that God's way is a way of justice and righteousness, a way of love intended for all, a way that we are called to follow, a way that gives our lives purpose, 
a way that can change the lives of others. Amen. our life coherence. It makes our life fuller, more meaningful. Let us take time this morning to be grateful for the call that we've received, for the purpose that we're given in Christ. And in that thanksgiving, let us give ourselves over to God and to God's work of reconciliation.
Will you pray with me once more? God of purpose, you created us for a reason, and we're called to live into your call, choosing the coherence that comes from grounding our lives in your ways. Lord, there are so many who are living into their God-given purpose right now. We lift up medical professionals who put themselves at risk caring for others. For all those providing essential services to the public, from hairdressers to grocery clerks to restaurant workers and so many more. To those who have found creative ways to be your people, even while physically separated from others. Healing God, we also pray for those who need you most right now. For those who are suffering from COVID-19 and those who have lost loved ones to the virus. Those whose jobs have been lost or reduced in this time of economic slowdown. Lord, we pray for the people of Iowa and the Midwest as they recover from a catastrophic storm. And we pray for the people of Beirut as they struggle to heal from a devastating explosion. We pray for those who face the oppression of racial injustice. May we listen openly to one another and realize that our reality may not be shared by others. Together, may we work for your reconciliation and peace. And may we pray also for your wholeness, for Dan and Elizabeth Vaughn, for Ken and Sherry Strack, for Gordon and Marie Breland, Art Hendon, for former member Morris Partee, who's been diagnosed with a non-lethal form of lymphoma. We pray for Cameron Tate, for Chris Mell, who's home from the hospital, for Stella Petty Chenault, Chenault and Judy Murphy. Lord, we celebrate with Elizabeth McConnell and her family the birth of her new nephew, Henry, and with Karen Miller on the birth of her great-granddaughter, Hadley. And we claim your loving presence for those we name in our hearts right now. Choosing to live according to God's purpose is to choose life. Let us claim this purpose, this life, as we pray, using the words your people have used throughout the ages. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the Sunday each year when we would normally have all the children up front and all the teachers up front for our annual blessing of the backpacks. This year, as everyone knows, is different. But in this time of isolation and pandemic, our school-aged children and those who lead them need our prayers more than ever, as do their families. Over the last two weeks, I've been visiting on an individual basis with our children and as a group last week with our youth as they produced a fabulous service of worship. Each one received a little backpack zipper pull that reminds them that Jesus walks with them as they enter into this school year. They also received a prayer box kit to help them talk with God during what, let's face it, could be a scary time. And you know how I was talking earlier about how people should act on their passions? I have to take and should give a big shout out to Sally Fry. Sally Fry is passionate about children. And when she heard that I was going to be visiting with each of the kids and bringing them a token of the congregation's love, she went out and bought coloring books and crayons to go to each of our younger children. And I'm not talking the little pack, I'm talking the 64 crayon pack. So thank you, Sally, for that. I know that you miss these beloved children of God as much as I do. So here's a few photos of their precious faces.
No one knows what path this school year will take. What is sure is that God, God's presence, and God's strength are with us throughout. Let us pray now for students, for teachers, for school workers, for families, all those who are going back to school in the next few weeks. God of wisdom, as, your, as our students, teachers, and school workers and families prepare for this new year of education, we give thanks for your constant presence with them. May you give them a spirit of hope that learning can and will happen, either in person or online. And may that hope be fulfilled, not just for some, but for all. May you keep them safe by working in the hearts of everyone they come in contact with, that all may honor your commandment to actively demonstrate love of neighbor. May all realize that this love includes caring for one another's health and well-being. May school districts take seriously their charge to provide a safe environment for all and be flexible enough to reconsider what this means going forward. May teachers lead with enthusiasm and joy. May students learn with the same enthusiasm and joy. And in the learning that takes place, may each one grow closer to you by understanding your world a little better. Lord, we ask you to bless these students, teachers, school workers, and families today and in the challenging days ahead and bless this church that we may support them in meaningful ways that encourage education and demonstrate your steadfast love. We pray all of this in Christ's name. Amen. Following the benediction, I invite you to share the peace of Christ with one another by typing into the Facebook feed. Even though we cannot be together in person, we can still offer one another the peace that comes from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In John's telling of the gospel, Jesus says, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. Abundant life is a life with purpose. It's the life that Christ has in store for you, if only you'll claim it. And now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and in all the days ahead. Go in peace to love and serve our living Lord. Amen.